Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is John Smelser. I'm Business Development Director at Globalec. Uh, I head up Southern Africa for Globalec. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you about the role of gas uh, in South Africa's economy going forward and during the energy transition. My basic message today to everyone is that gas is absolutely fundamental to South Africa realizing its just energy transition pathway. Another way of saying that is that far from gas being an obstacle to South Africa achieving its lower carbon pathways and its recently released nationally determined contribution and getting to net zero uh, around 2050, the pathway is not away from gas, it's through gas. And there's many reasons for that. First of all, in the power systems, and this is what Globalec does and I spend my life working in, gas plays a fundamental role, particularly in the South African context. Uh, it's been said many times, but it balances the intermittency of renewables when the sun's not shining and the wind's not blowing. Right now, it does that in the most cost-effective way. Uh, there's a lot of talk about lithium ion and battery storage. Uh, the costs there are very expensive right now, and gas is going to need to play a bridging role. But even going far into the future when the cost of lithium ion hopefully comes down, uh, lithium ion, ion only addresses the first gear of in intermittency within a day. Uh, the sun shines during the day. You need to shift some of the power that's generated by solar to the peak in the evening when all of the demand spikes. Lithium ion may be able to uh, play that role and displace gas over a longer term as its costs go down. But the second gear of intermittency is also critical. And that's when the wind doesn't blow for a season or the sun doesn't shine cloudy days for a week at a time. And then the grid needs long duration storage. And I think all experts agree that lithium ion is never going to be able to play that role cost effectively. Uh, it just can't store energy for more than eight to 12 hours. Maybe someday we get to 20 hours, but not the 500 hours or a season that we're talking here. And that's where gas will play a critical role in balancing that seasonal storage. We can see that not in the African context, um, but recently in Europe, the UK, in Texas, in California, uh, as they've increased penetration of renewables on the grid, uh, they've really realized that seasonality factor with the gas price spikes um, and, and the, the need there to then balance the uh, renewables. So I think that that reality is coming home to everyone. And that takes us on to another key aspect of gas, which makes it very different from coal or other fossil fuels. And that is there is a credible pathway to a zero carbon source of fuel uh, that can fire the gas infrastructure. So we recently closed our Tamane project in Mozambique just last week. Um, that's a 450 uh, megawatt combined cycle gas fired power plant. Um, it has state of the art Siemens turbines. All of the major manufacturers uh, are on this, on this trajectory. Those turbines burn up to 80% of hydrogen out of the gates without any additional investment. And by the mid 2020s, all of the major equipment suppliers, Siemens, GE, Mitsubishi, some of the Chinese companies um, have confirmed and claimed that they, their turbines and, and other forms of gas fired power engines, et cetera, will be able to burn 100% hydrogen. And what that means is that our plants that we are going to invest in and build going forward to drive the energy transition, while they may be at first run on fossil fuel gas, over time as the price of green hydrogen comes down and we can see the huge policy momentum driving that already, um, the fuel source for that infrastructure will be displaced from fossil fuel gas to green hydrogen, which is a zero carbon fuel. Maybe there's a step, interim step, where blue hydrogen is used, depending on where we are in South Africa, maybe one of those economies that does that. That makes gas-fired power a fundamentally different um, technology from, from some of the other coal-fired power and some of the other fossil fuel-based uh, generation technologies, in that it has this very credible pathway to, in the future, um, being 
utilized with zero carbon sources and therefore being a zero carbon addition to our grids. And that's why I think there's a real stunning realization uh, everywhere in the California grid, Texas grid, UK grid, uh, further afield, that turbines are going to play a fundamental role of our power grids even two or 300 years from now and in a very much a zero carbon uh, world. Um, so uh, again, that just goes to underline how critical gas is going to be in the role of gas in the power systems, but that's putting aside uh, our other hard to abate uh, energy sectors beyond power generation. So production of cement, uh, transport at large scale, fertilizer, other petrochemical uses. Uh, again, gas is gonna play a very important role in displacing liquid fuels uh, and other fossil fuels um, in ensuring that uh, those hard to abate sectors of our energy economy can come down in their carbon utilization. And again, as we have zero carbon sources of gas to displace fossil fuel gas, such as green hydrogen, uh, hopefully there can be a real role to play there, uh, including in our net zero and zero carbon fu future energy worlds. So putting that all together, when we look at South Africa and the pathway that it needs to walk over the next 30 to 40 years to get to a net zero future and to make good on its carbon commitments that it's made in its recently updated nationally determined contribution uh, on the runway to COP26 in Glasgow, and especially looking at the lower trajectory of that uh, nationally determined contribution, um, gas is gonna play a fundamental role. And that is emphasized by the fact that South Africa has one of the most coal uh, uh, emphasized grids uh, in the world. So a huge percentage, um, close to a high 80% of uh, South Africa's energy comes from coal. Many of those plants up to 12 gigawatts uh, are going to be decommissioned in the coming 10 years and they have to be replaced with something. South Africa has led the world in many ways in, uh, in procuring renewable power, solar and wind. Uh, as GlobalEC, we've been very fortunate to be investors in uh, eight projects and to recently have won uh, a huge allocation in the round five. And it's a huge um, strategic priority of GlobalEC and many other investors to build that solar and wind. But as I've just outlined, that alone will not fill in the gap that displacing coal will create in our power sector in South Africa. And gas-fired power will have to be a fundamental piece uh, to step in and address the intermittency and, and deliver some of the baseload power that's going to be required by the gap in generation that decommissioning of the coal uh, will, will provide, will, will create. Um, and then if we combine that with South Africa, hopefully driving to be one of the leaders in building a hydrogen economy, blue into green, uh, there's a real opportunity there for that gas-fired power infrastructure uh, to then be run with zero carbon fuel in the medium to long term. Um, so far from uh, gas being a, uh, an obstacle to South Africa's pathway on the power sector side, to a zero carbon future, it's going to play a central role. And that's true then of the non-power harder to abate sectors in the South African economy, which are themselves largely driven by cheap coal and need to be stepped towards a lower carbon pathway, starting with fossil fuel gas, eventually hopefully moving to zero carbon gas. One thing we haven't talked about here as well is the justice argument. Um, so South Africa um, and certainly around the African continent um, has not contributed a huge amount of carbon uh, to the current crisis that we have, our climate crisis. That has been done by uh, largely the Western world and, and now adding China to that mix. Um, I mean, just some basic stats. Uh, if you think um, there's been the recent announcements of uh, bans of overseas fossil fuel investment by certain countries in the world. Uh, if you take, for example, um, a comparison, in Mozambique, um, after our Tamani project closes, has less than a gigawatt of gas-fired power. If you compare that to, uh, you know, the UK, which has 32 gigawatts of gas-fired power, and the US, which is a multiple of that, 
the U.S. has almost 2,000 gas-fired power uh, stations in, in operation. Um, there's, a, there's a space for Africa and South Africa as well uh, to claim some of that carbon credit to ensure that it has a sustainable, just energy transition, even though it's headed to the same place and actually leading in many ways uh, to get into a, a lower carbon future into a net zero carbon world. But it needs to take a pathway that enables it to retrain workers and desperately get the energy that it needs. Um, and so there needs to be some allowances there on, on, a, on a justice basis. And we are starting to hear some of the, um, those voices raised in COP26. I think uh, there will be an even louder crescendo of those voices as we get to Egypt in COP27 next year. And that's, that's fair. So it opens a political space uh, for investment uh, in gas as part of um, the journey uh, that South Africa and the rest of the African continent needs to take to um, not just a lower carbon future, but also uh, an energy rich um, and a, a, de a economically developing future. So putting that all together, um, I'm going to close off there. And just to reiterate um, that uh, gas is set to play and needs to play a central role in South Africa's energy transition uh, and not just as a bridging and transitional um, stepping stones, but actually fundamentally over the longer term and into a net zero future, uh, gas infrastructure will be a part of that future. But the fuel source uh, will be replaced by, uh, from fossil fuel gas, will be replaced by lower carbon fuel sources and eventually through um, fuels like green hydrogen, zero carbon sources. Um, so it just underlines the fundamental role that gas will play going forward. I'll leave it there. I look forward to hearing the contributions of the other speakers and, and to engaging uh, in the debate as we as we move forward. Thanks very much.